Let's bring in Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs. He joins us now. He is chairman of the House Freedom Caucus and member of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, Congressman, good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, you've been watching and listening to this with us. Where do you stand on this debate? Well, they were long on, on uh, philosophy and platitudes, but very short on the specifics. And so we have to see the, the bill and read it, of course. But uh, I'm just going to tell you, Sandra, um, some, one of the things she mentioned was the elimination of the qualified immunity uh, for police officers. And what that's going to cause is that's going to cause a flight away from serving in police uh, duty. And, and what, what that means ultimately is uh, you're going to ultimately, if this passes the way... It, she described it, you're going to actually see increases in crime rates because police officers, nobody's going to want to be a police officer because um, you're going to have some immunity problems. Instead of the, the department taking the immunity, it's going to be the individual and nobody who's going to want to put their lives and their family in that kind of a harm's way. Uh, and, and so that's going to be a real problem in the future. Uh, additionally, uh, she didn't mention all of the, the provisions that they're talking about, but they include uh, some, some training. Um, and there needs to be some de-escalation training. And I will just tell you, in Arizona, when I introduced legislation to do that multiple times in Arizona, we put it on the floor, not a single Democrat voted to support de-escalation training. So there needs to be de-escalation training for sure. But I'm just telling you, I'm not sure Congress is the best place to provide a, uh, a unique situation with a one-size-fits-all solution. Well, and Congressman, as you know, Congress doesn't usually fund police departments. It's done in local cities, right. local towns, something that's often left out of this conversation. And what we are hearing from some of these cities, like de Blasio in New York, uh, is about, if not defunding, shifting money away from police. What do you think about this entire debate? Well, I think it's wrong-headed. Um, obviously, the you know Minneapolis in particular, they say this morning that they have two-thirds of their council is ready and prepared to actually eliminate their police force. Well, so if that becomes the case, and you defund police policing, and you take away equipment, which Nancy Pelosi said is part of this bill as well, you're going to uh, allow the police to be disadvantaged again like we saw in the 70s when we had high crime rates because they didn't have the equipment that they needed. They didn't have the training that they needed. And so if you need more training, defunding uh, your police department means you're going to have less training. It means you're going to have less support for the police officers, which again is going to lead to higher crime rates and insecurity in, the, in those uh, places. Congressman, thanks so much for your time due to the breaking news and the, um, the news conference on Capitol Hill. We're going to have to leave it there. Appreciate you staying with us. Thanks, Sandra and Ed.